one of the biggest inventions of mankind is internet and satellite internet is going to take it another leap further hello friends in today's video we are going to do the analysis of nelco which is a tata group company which is going to disrupt the satellite internet space if you are new to the channel please do subscribe and hit the bell icon and don't forget to join our telegram channel where i keep posting daily market analysis and lots of exciting stuff so let's get started so nelco is a part of tata group which is a 116 billion dollar group it offers solutions in vsat connectivity satellite communication as well as integrated security and surveillance space a few of the terminology which we'll be using in today's analysis i'll explain in detail in the coming slides and thereafter i'll take you forward and explain about the company and the industry so nelco has clients in the private sector as well as the government sector it has licenses of vsat as an internet service provider as well as the ifmc license which is related to in flight and maritime communications it is one of the leading vsat providers in india and it provides satellite communication to almost all the remote places in india at a very cheap cost it offers end to end solutions and maintains hubs which are required for private and government companies for their communication the company has two subsidiaries nelco network products limited which is into the ifmc services which is the flight and marine communication service and it also has a subsidiary called tata net services limited which provides the satcom service there's a restructuring going on in the company after which the tata net services get will get merged with the parent company and the vsat license will be changed to the name of nelco and the group structure will be simplified it's a very old company started in 1940 and headquarters are in mumbai managing director and the ceo of this company is mr pj nath who joined this company as a ceo in 2011 he is a graduate from bits pilani he has an experience of more than 35 years in the it and telecom space as you he has worked with companies like wipro tata communications and sifi earlier prior to joining uh, nelco he was the executive president of sifi and he was also Uh, the vice president of ESN now let's understand the business of the company broadly the company's business can be divided into two segments where one is security surveillance and the other is vsat the vsat communication you can broadly classify into two types one is a network of communication which is exchange of data and the second one is the satellite internet now what is vsat vsat stands for very small aperture terminal so in vsat what happens it is not possible to connect each and every remote place across the world with wired internet or communication channels so in vsat there's a dish antenna fixed onto a building and that antenna communicates with an satellite which is in the earth's orbit so wireless communication happens through that antenna and that antenna is connected to a modem which transmits the data and internet to a computer so wireless communication with a satellite is happening through vsat so in simple words through vsat wireless communication is possible by means of satellites which are in the earth's orbit now in satellites the satellite internet technology is not very new it has been old so what's new which is coming in this technology earlier we used to communicate through the satellites which were geo satellites which were very far from the earth surface those were about 35000 kilometers from the earth surface now the new age companies are trying to launch satellites which are called leo satellites which are low earth orbit satellites which are just about 500 to 1500 kilometers from the earth surface so since these satellites will be very near the communication would be more reliable and more faster so different companies in different countries will be launching new a number of leo satellites and over a period of time there would be a network created like this wherein the satellites would be communicating with a lot of devices across the globe and as well as there will be a communication between themselves so there will be a complete network which will cover each and every portion of the earth to communicate as well as use the internet so this is what is going to take shape in the near future so vsat is one of the service which is rendered by nelco the company operates the network systems consists of the satcom satcom is a short form of satellite communication so this business is run through its subsidiary tata net services which will soon get merged into the parent company so this company has pan india presence with more than 
15,000 plus locations where it, can, where it can offer the VSAT service. It has already an installed base of more than 50,000 VSATs on its network. It enjoys a 26% of the market share. So this is a B2B business and in B2B business it offers these services to private as well as the government sectors. They have two hubs located in Navi Mumbai and Dehradun through which they offer this communication services. Now, through which, to which industries mainly the services are rendered, whatever communication we see in banks as well as their ATMs, that technology is also VSAT which is provided by Nelco. In the renewable energy space, whenever the electricity or energy would be generated, the communication of the amount of energy generated, the transmission, all this communication will happen from remote places through the VSAT technology. Wherever oil exploration and gas exploration happens, those places are also remote places and that communication is also done through VSAT. The communication while we are flying in aeroplanes or we are sailing through ships, those areas also are remote or far from the earth's surface where wired communication is not possible and the only means of communication is through VSAT which is through the satellite communication. So these are the major industries which cater to, which are being catered to by Nelco. Apart from this, there are a lot of other industries also which we use these services. Now, another uh, division of this company which is related to the security surveillance, although this division does not generate majority of the revenue, it is a very minuscule portion of the total revenue. Still, this is run by the company as this, the future of this sector is also bright. So, under this sector, they, uh, this business is run through their subsidiary which is Nelco Network Products Limited. In this, Nelco caters to the security requirements of their clients, both the government as well as the private client. This service has applications in various things like industrial plants, power stations, broadcasting stations, telecommunications, airports, railways, seaports. So all these are the areas where the security surveillance service is rendered. Surveillance of the enemy movements is also done by the defense sector in India by using technologies which Nelco offers. Recently, Nelco had a partnership with Telesat. Telesat is a global giant for satellite communication. So it's a Canadian satellite company. So as we have understood, Leo satellites are the new ones which will be launched for a faster satellite communication. Telesat is one of the major players in the world for launching Leo satellites. So now Telesat has done a partnership with Nelco and both of these together will be providing satellite internet services across the globe. So this partnership opens up huge opportunity for Nelco and they aim to spend about 37,200 crore to set up 298 LEO satellites across the globe. So this is about the business model of Nelco. Now let's understand what are the competitive strengths. The credibility or the brand name or the trust which Tata Group has adds a lot of value to this company. In the VSAT segment, the company enjoys a huge market share of about 26% which makes it a leading VSAT player in the country. Our, majorly there are four players in the country which hold VSAT license and Elco is one of them. The industry is highly regulated and licenses are given to very few players. So there is a high chance that very few players remain in this industry and the market share is divided among a handful of players in future also. And Nelco, since it is into this segment since a very long time, it will enjoy the early moving advantage. What would be the growth prospects of Nelco going further? As you can see, every company is focusing on digitization these days. They are trying to automate various processes. And COVID has led to vir virtually working and most of the company's employees are nowadays working from home. And working from home requires reliable internet services and wherever broadband or fixed line services are not available, the only option left would be the satellite communication. Government is also coming up with a new policy which is called the Spacecom policy which will increase the opportunities of companies like Nelco. In-flight and maritime communication also is a growing sector in the SATCOM space and recent partnership with Telesat opens up huge opportunities for this company in the coming future. There is a potential for this company to grow its business multifold as the market is going to expand. The internet communication space is very nascent as of now and this market size itself can grow multifold which opens a lot of opportunities for this company. The lot of, there will be new technologies like the DO satellites or throughput satellites which would be launched. The SATCOM technology as we have seen is used in various industries like the banking, oil and exploration, digital education, renewable energy, 
IFMC, all these industries will also keep on expanding and the requirement for VSAT and SATCOM will keep on increasing in these industries. So who are the competitors of Nelco? We'll make a broad distinction into two parts of the competitors. The first one would be the companies which have the VSAT license in India. The second one would be the companies which will be focusing on the satellite internet space. So if you see the VSAT license presently in India, Reliance Geo, ATL, BSNL, Planetcast Media, Hughes Communication and HCL Comnet Systems. These are the companies which have the VSAT license. So these are the direct competitors of Nelco. Now if you come, if you see the satellite internet space, it's going to compete with global giants like Starlink, which is already planning to launch their satellite internet space and they have started taking bookings also by 2022 and uh, the services, the speed which they would be providing is around 150 Mbps to begin with. Bharti Airtel in India has partnered with a global company called OneWeb to launch Leo satellites and provide SATCOM uh, internet services. Amazon is also going to enter this segment. Reliance Geo, although they are silent right now, but they may come up with satellite internet services to compete with all these global giants. So it's going to be a tough competition with such big companies for Nelco. What would be the different risks for this company? Since it's a global company, there would be exchange rate fluctuations. It has to keep innovating their technology as the global competitors innovate. Otherwise, their technology will become obsolete. If there is any uncertain event which causes damage to their infrastructure, there could be a issue. There, this is a highly regulated industry and time to time the government will be closely monitoring them as there is also security risk. Globally, it has to compete with various big giants and there is, there is a risk of losing market share if there is any problem in the services which they offer. And this industry is a highly capital intensive industry which involves a lot of investment in infrastructure, on the ground infrastructure as well as in, in spend in launching the satellites. Now overall, let's understand how this industry is expected to grow. SATCOM as we have understood is to provide satellite communication to remotest parts of, across the globe. Presently, the industry is very small, somewhere around 800 to 1000 crores only. But this can grow multifold in the coming time. And as you know, it's a highly regulated industry and government closely monitors it. There are only four uh, major VSAT license holders, as we have seen in the earlier slides. And this involves a lot of investments in innovations and technology. Government has per permitted the use of SATCOM technology in IFMC, which is flight and uh, marine communications. and Indian market, as you know, the internet penetration is growing very heavily and satellite communication, uh, the satellite internet also will be adopted quite fast if it is reasonable and the service is good. Now coming to the numbers, we'll start with the quarterly results. The revenue has grown from 49 crores to 55 crores when we compare the first quarter of uh, FY22 with the previous year, which is about 11.26%. EBITDA has grown from 10 to 12 crores, which is about 20%. EBITDA margin has risen from 20 to 22% and profit after tax has increased to 4.38 crores. Now let's compare the yearly financials. In the last five years, if you compare the revenue, it has grown at a CAGR of about 11.92%. I am comparing five years here, but if you see the 10 years, it, there has been inconsistency in the revenue growth also. EBITDA has grown at about average 25% in the last five years. It has decreased by five crores in the FY21 year. EBITDA margins have risen from 13% to 23% till FY20 but slightly there has been a reduction in FY21 and it has come to around 20% but still 20% is maintained. Profit after tax has increased from 6 to 22 crores in the years from FY17 to 19 but from there there has been a fall from 22 to 12 crores. So like this you can see on a broad basis in the last 10 years the performance has not been so consistent. Profit after tax margins increased to 11.62% in FY19 but fell down to around 5% in FY21. EPS has fallen from 9 rupees to 5 rupees in FY21. Now coming to the balance sheet items, the equity of the company has remained consistently same. Earlier in the few years, the company has reported losses due to which the reserves were written off and there was a negative reserve up to FY17 or almost zero. So there is not much reserves in the company to incur capex. Although the business of the company is capital intensive, this is one point to be noted. After the steady performance from FY18, if you see, presently the company has around 50 crore worth of reserves, which is not so high. If you see the borrowings, they have about 121 crores borrowings FY20, which got reduced to about 90 crores in FY21. So 90 crores appears less, but if you see the debt equity ratio, it's more than one. 
Fixed assets have been steadily growing as the company has been incurring capex and presently it's about 100 crores. Trade receivables do not have any abnormally high movements which is decent. Cash equivalence if you see it just has a cash balance of about 10 crore on the balance sheet. Now coming to the cash flow statement. In FI 17-18 it was a positive free cash flow company whereas in FI 19-20 there was a negative free cash flow because there was an increase in the capex. In FI 21 it came back to positive cash flow of about 44 crores. Data days have been fairly constant and there doesn't seem to be much abnormal movements. The return on capital employed has fallen to about 14% in FI21 which is not so impressive. Now let's see the shareholding pattern. Promoters which is the Tata group holds about 50% in the company, public holds about 46%. So institutional holding is not much which is just about 3%. As you know the internal restructuring is going on and the subsidiary will be merged with the parent company and the VSAT license will be transferred to Nelco Limited. In spite of reducing so much of debt, still the debt equity ratio is 1.18. ROE is about 17% which is decent. The Strat Auditors is one of the big four firm which is SR Barkley Boy. Dividend yield is 0.22%. So although less but still it's a dividend paying company. And remuneration to the managing director is about 2.96 crores. So coming to the valuation part, the last traded price is somewhere around 548 rupees and 52 week high and low is 594 and 173. So it's almost trading near its 52 week high price. In the last five years, on an average it has given a CAGR of about 44% and last three years about 20% and last one year because of the news of partnership with Telesat it has given a massive return of 186%. The market cap still is just about 1200 crores after increase of the sale price, share price so much. It trades at a PE of about 84 which is expensive and compared to the last five years median PE is about just 33. Industry PE is about 30 and EPS is about 6.5 rupees as per the trailing 12 months. Face value is still 10. Book value is around 33 rupees which makes the price to book ratio about 16.5 which is pretty expensive. Market caps to sales valuation is about 5.39 which is again on the higher side. So in terms of valuation due to the recent run up given by the stock the valuations are very expensive. Now if at all you choose to invest in this company at what level you can start investing. Somewhere around 400 there is a support and if you invest at somewhere around 400 as per the trailing 12 months EPS the PE comes to around 61. So if at all you choose to invest you can start investing somewhere around 400. So this is not what I recommend this is just a chart reading I am doing to give you an entry level if at all you choose to invest in the company. This is about Nelco to summarize the key points it's a Tata group company which will give it a lot of brand advantage as well as the entire group companies will be in support to grow this company and recently you have seen all the group companies have uh, been restructured and there has been a lot of focus in growing each of the Tata Group companies. It's into a niche space which is into satellite communication and internet space wherein the future is very bright, the market size is growing rapidly and it's a futuristic sector as internet is going to be a disruptive space. Fundamental wise I would say it is decent but not so impressive. Growth wise the growth has been inconsistent over the few years so you have to watch out keenly with the coming upcoming quarterly and yearly results and see where whether from now onwards at least there, can, there will be consistency in the results or not. Although it's an old company started in 1940 still it is very small so this shows that the company has not grown much or the Tata group have not focused on this company much. Although it's a capital intensive business there's not much reserves or cash in the company so if at all they have to grow big they may have to raise debt or may have to raise uh, equity only then they will be able to do a lot of capex. In terms of competition they have to compete with big giants in India as well as globally so it, the competition is going to be very fierce. So although it's a company wherein there is a huge opportunity the future is bright and being a Tata group company we can expect big things to happen. But still, if at all you choose to invest, you have to accumulate gradually as in when you see the numbers improving that the company is able to compete with the others, when the people are accepting the satellite internet, they are subscribing to it. So when all these things keep happening, then you can keep increasing the stakes in the company. So this is about Nelco. I hope you like the analysis and if you want me to analyze your favorite company, don't forget to leave the name of that company in the comments below. And before closing the video, please do subscribe to the channel and you can join our free telegram channel as well. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.